Review and I have a special one for you today. I have in my possession, as you can see in front of you, a Transformers Bumblebee movie toy. The Leader Class Soundwave and Doom Box. Now, a lot of you are probably looking at this and going, uh, isn't that the Titans Return Soundwave? Indeed it is. But surprisingly enough, this is considered to be movie Soundwave. They used the Titan's Return toy and repainted it, remolded its front uh, bits for its uh, boombox mode to give it a little bit more of an 80s flair and renamed the Titan Master Boombox, or Doombox, which I'm really kind of liking. Uh, and the only reason I'm showing off the packaging in this segment is I have to show off a package this mind-bendingly 80s. It's unbelievable. Now, if you do want to pick, get a figure like this for yourself, it is only exclusively available at Target or Target.com. I'd imagine the aftermarket markup on eBay and some other seller places will be very immense. And I will tell you here and now, the price for this is movie leader price, not Titans, not Generations leader price. It is a full... $50. Yeah, that's a hard bullet to bite, but when you've got packaging this good and a figure, th which is already a figure I know is very awesome, despite a few flaws, it is definitely worth picking up. And I really love how they package it, including having his actual boombox handle out of the packaging where you can pick it up. That's just brilliant, in my opinion. Uh, it is from the Bumblebee movie, which is about to, which comes out uh, December twentieth. It's a Christmas Christmas uh, showing, which is nice. It's part of the Bumblebee Greatest Hits line, which has this so far as we know, and a second one which contains three of the Data Slugs, like Laserbeak here from Generations which has Frenzy, or the Blue Rumble, whichever you prefer, uh, Howback, which was an eShop exclusive, and a, a more G1 look colored accurate Buzzsaw, which is very nice, which makes me wonder if they're going to release another Ravage Rumble and uh, Laserbeak down the line. Because the other package not only comes with three, three Data Slug slash cassettes, but it also comes with one of those abhorrent one-step Transformer, Bumble, Transformer Bumblebees. Ugh, I'll try saying that five times fast. But yeah, this is very nice. I'm loving this. Just the blaring 80s style is so awesome. I, re I saw this and I'm going like, I can't pass this up. I know it's a figure I already have. They still did the one dang thing that I don't like, and that's the still, as far as I can tell, has a yellow freaking visor. Hasbro, you had one job. One! <sighs> but other than that, it is pretty interesting. The write-up on this guy is very interesting, and I will hold it up here for you to read if you wish. It does, however, mention Titan Masters. Now, the way this is portrayed, it's Bumblebee is the one uh, telling you about this Decepticon, which is very nice. Now, I actually pulled back about as far as I can with my camera stand just because of how big this box is. So after this, I'm going to bust him out of the box and we're going to do some comparisons between uh, him, his Titan's Return figure, as well as G1, which will be awesome. So we'll be right back. And we're back, and oh my, yes. While this is considered a movie sound wave, I think this figure takes a few more cues from the G1 Toys color design, which is just lovely. Now, 
This figure, of course, was based on Titan's Return Soundwave, which that figure was a remold of Titan's Return Blaster. Hence, it's a boombox and not a cassette player like G1 is. It sucks, but what you gonna do? I do, however, love the new stickers that have been added that give it a more... that it has, like, radio, actual radio frequencies you'd find on a real little radio. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a sound player or what that's supposed to be. I'm, I'm sure some DJ can tell me that later, but... Yeah, it's still the awesome leader class Titans Return figure we got two years ago. Uh, I, after messing with it just a little bit, I will say at least the Titan Master is suffering from a little bit of mold degradation. His his at least his hips and knees are a little looser than the original Titans Return figure that came with Soundwave. Um, Sound Blaster was the Titans Return version and. Doombox is this movie version. I can't believe we have movie versions of Titan Masters now. Well, technically we did. Cogman was supposed to be a headmaster, and they're calling this a Titan Master here, so, hmm, interesting. But yes, like I said, this is just the Titan's Return version. I'm going to pull my camera just a little bit further back. I don't know how well I'm going to get these in shot, but here is the Titan's Return figure. As you can see, they have completely remolded the front uh, plates for the boombox mode to give it a more 80s feel. They have painted more bits on, and as you can plainly see, my Titans Return Soundwave's gold chrome on the front has um, kind of worn off. It makes me really hope the, the paint on here is a little tougher. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice that the Decepticon symbol on this version is smaller than this version. That's interesting. Perhaps they're going for more of a G1 feel in that regard. But like I said, you can see they've got some, they do have a little bit of color change between them. They did remold these plates, so they're a little different. Unfortunately, he does still suffer from the same problem the Titans Return Soundwave and Blaster both suffer from, is that there's big, huge gaps in the back. Something that I think the G1 and a uh, third party figure I have here uh, solved a lot better. Speaking of which, let's do some more comparisons, shall we? Because I have G1! Yay! This is actually a the Toys R Us reissue from back when Classics was around. And it's based on the Japanese remold Sound Blaster from the Headmaster series. So this particular version can actually hold two cassettes rather than one. And while I do have a G1 from the 80s Soundwave, it is in absolutely abhorrent condition and it, it it doesn't even come from me being play, playing with it too much it just time and age have taken its toll on it even just sitting on a shelf so yeah unfortunately you're going to just have to deal with a reissue of Soundwave as for the comparison and for one more comparison one of my favorite third party sound waves so yeah I, and again, I said, like I said, with a G1, I think they handled the gap issue a little better by molding what will be his legs to fit his torso a little better. And I feel like they maybe could have done this with this figure. If they were going to go as far as to remold these pieces, eh, they could have gone as far as to completely take out the base mode, which serves no purpose with this movie aesthetic, and use the plastic to fill in this bottom gap here because they've gone as far on this version as to if i can get it to focus carve in a play button to carve play into the top button even the titan return figure didn't do that let me get the light there we go see how crazy is that so they have put a lot more detail into this figure like i said it's pretty much the same one so the weapon storage is just the same and i'll talk more about the weapons in robot mode because there's some nice uh, nice parts about that I'd like to talk about. He's slightly mistransformed, there we go. But other than that, he feels about the same. Uh, he does do the same thing as the Titans Return version. Has a pop out. And this is supposed to be like a remote control. Yeah, it's just the storage for the for Doom Box. 
Um, it is colored differently. Uh, I think, yeah, the plastic is about the same color, but yeah, for whatever reason, they put red rather than blue. Oh no, I take it back. The Titans Return version is a just a shade darker. Interesting. But yeah, it, it stores Titan Masters. As you can see, they got a little lazy on the paint when it came to this guy, at least on the legs. Although, might as well compare the two now while we have them out. Because they did do something that even the Titans Return version didn't do. Get them super close up. They painted his visor! What the heck, man? Seriously? That's awesome. But yeah, they painted his visor, which is very nice. So, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much the boombox mode. Um, I'm debating if I should do the base mode. I'm probably going to, just because I don't know if I even talked about the base mode in the Titans Return. Did I do Titans Return Soundwave? Oh, God. I really got to go over my back catalog. I'll let you know in the next part of this video. I'll see you there. And we're back. And base mode. And yeah, this is something I never actually showed in the Titans Return version of Soundwave's review. It turns into this base. Uh, I will say this now. I don't know if I've said this before in some of the other Titans Return videos. I never liked the base mode that all the leader class figures did. Except for Overlord. And that's because the original figure had a base mode. All these, uh, the leader class Optimus, the leader class Soundwave, Blaster, and uh, Sky Shadow all did this kind of base mode thing, and I think it looked ridiculous. You know, the, and the only reason I am okay with, like I said, uh, Overlord having one is because he was originally designed to have a base mode with his original G1 figure, so yeah. Um, other than that, the base mode isn't terrible, but it's not my cup of tea. Uh, it, it It's all just kind of strewn out. Uh, and while they did put in a lot of new paint as compared to the original. No? Huh. They actually did remold pieces of the base mode. The bring it up. Those internal bits right there Give me a second. <laughs> Planning, Edward. You really should have done that. Have been changed. Huh. Fascinating. I wonder that's... Hmm. I guess since they were changing the outer plating, they decided to change the inner design as well. I guess that makes sense. Uh, and while we're in this mode, and I have the bits out to show off, <clears throat> the gun and... Did we ever decide that this was a missile pod or a sound projector of some kind? I don't know. Well, here they are definitely suggesting it's a missile pod because they've painted all the tips of the missiles, something the Titans Return version did not do. Although something else they changed is the painting strip. They have this. There's this black strip, whereas on the Titans Return version, it's red. It's very interesting. Also, another interesting point, both of these colors are actually on the G1 batteries. Well, let me grab one and I'll show you. Yeah, this is the missile pod one. But yeah, the G1 batteries have both of those colors. That's wild. Huh. I guess they could only use one color per for the pods when they were making them, so I guess they decided since they'd done the red for the Titans Return version, they decided to use black to continue the homage for G of G1, but yeah, that's very interesting. Let me put these back on and I'll get a little more of an aerial view of the base mode, since again, I didn't show it off in Titans Return, but yeah, good timing. Yeah, sorry, I'm right next to a window, so besides hearing the ambient soids sounds of a highway next to my house, you also have random idiots yelling out their car windows when they pass by. I swear it's like they know I'm reviewing when I'm trying to review. But yeah, this is the base mode. It doesn't look terrible, 
But as I, as I said, I've never been a giant fan of these base modes during Titan's Return. So, while not perfect, it isn't bad either. I do like the fact they've changed a lot of the colors. Like, on the Titan's Return version, they've actually... They, or in this version, they painted these little bits rather than just leaving them the regular plastic color. They've painted onto the screen, the command screen down here. So it's not bad. I really like it. It could use with a little bit more paint, say on these little doodads, but other than that, I think this is a this is pretty good. Not bad. So I'll be right back with robot mode. All right, we're back with robot mode. And sorry, the figure isn't in full frame. I had to switch to a completely different tripod to get him to fit, just to get the camera level with his head at least. So it's been a little bit of a nightmare and I can't completely get him in frame without holding the camera. But man, this figure looks good. Now a lot of the changes, physical changes on this figure are mostly located in the legs. And that's because obviously they play a huge part in playing the plates for the uh, boombox mode. Uh, with only some minor physical change, mo mostly paint changes to the rest of the body, which is not bad. It still looks really good. It's still in probably one of the best Soundwave figures you could get uh, at a not unreasonable price. Yep, 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 camera's gonna fight me. This is why I switched tripods. This one is the, the ball joint. He's just completely lost all friction. Um... But yes, uh, this is its leader mode. It's, 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 it's robot mode. <laughs> leader mode. Eh. But yeah. And as far as I can tell, the feel is just about the same. The skirts do feel just a hair. I don't know. I guess eh, they're about the same. I guess, I guess for the most part, other than um, Doombox's legs the figure itself is feels just about the same as the one you got for titans return two years ago so hey although hasbro and i warn this is a bit of a rant of all the changes you made to this figure and purport this to be a movie figure why in unicron's deepest pit is soundwave's visor still yellow Seriously. It was the one thing we wanted changed from the Titans Return figure. It was the one thing we wanted changed. Seriously, Hasbro, you have a bad habit of making almost perfect figures and then finding something to stumble on the one yard line about. It was the one thing I really held against the Titans Return Soundwave was the yellow visor. And you once again gave him another yellow visor. Dagnabbit Hasbro, this is getting ridiculous. I really shouldn't have to turn to repo labels to get a proper red visor Soundwave. But I digress. Other than that one issue for me as a nitpicking problem, the figure is overall perfect. The colors are much closer to the G1 figure, although now that I look at my G1 figure, I guess in the, ar I guess in the arms weren't as dark as I remember them being. And the, I know the animation model isn't got arms that dark. I'm wondering where that pla that plastic color comes from. I'm starting to think that might have been from the G1 comic books. That design. Although I guess I never did get Dark of the Moon uh, um, sound wave, so it, that dark plastic might come from that particular sound wave figure. So speaking of comparisons, let me get this sound wave in shot. As you can see, other than, yeah, like I said, the gold plate, the gold paint on my front. Hold on. Ah, fudge. As you can see, the gold plate on his is scratched off. So, yeah. And, eh, and you can see, 
they did add some some more paint to the side of his uh, mouth visor. Come on, focus on the on the head, Edward. <sighs> this is why I don't like doing hands. But and most of the changes comes into play with the legs. As you can see, the legs are a little more G1 accurate from a particular point of view. <laughs> I think those yellow lines are actually supposed to be replicating those yellow lines, which are not as easily seen from an angle. And not easily seen from a straight on angle either, but yeah, I think those are what they're trying to replicate. Um, so you have that. And just because it's my favorite third party sound wave I've picked up so far. Uh, compare him to Mech Planets, not Soundwave. But yeah, this is an awesome figure. Now, obviously, I picked mine up at Target. It seems that's where they're popping up now. In fact, I picked this up the night I went to go see Transformers the Movie in theaters from 1986. So it was a really awesome night for me. I got to see a cool movie, and I got to buy this very awesome figure. Uh, I will, however, say if you do have the Titans Return figure, I don't think it's very necessary for you to buy this version of Soundwave. Uh, if you skipped the Titans Return Soundwave and regretted it, I highly recommend picking this figure up while you are purchasing it at movie studio prices, leader class prices, which is $49.99. I do think the remolding, the extra paint, the attention to detail is all but worth it. I'd say the only thing, other thing I wish Hasbro had changed from the Titans Return figure is the gun. The gun is still just Blaster's weapon, but in gray plastic rather than blue plastic. Which I kind of find a little discouraging. Um, but other than that, I still think it's a fantastic figure well worth the pickup, and if you are like me going to pick up the other the cassette pack, which is about thirty dollars, which comes with the which comes with three cassettes, at least one of them the fans have been really wanting, which was a which was the other uh humanoid cassette, Rumble or Frenzy, whichever one you want to call it, the blue one. I think going ahead and picking this figure up with it is a definite must. I think it's a fantastic sound wave and possibly the best sound, the most movie sound wave figure I own. Which is kind of sad when you think about it, since I never got a chance to get any of the Dark of the Moon sound waves except for the little Legion class figure. But, other than that, until next time, this is Titan's Ed saying I'll see you when I see you.